it's time to move on past z-scores to our next measure position, which is percentiles. Now, a lot of you have probably seen percentiles, but might not have realized it. So let's talk about them. What are they? Well, suppose you have a data set and you have your lowest value here, which is your minimum, and your highest value here, which is your maximum. Well, percentiles divide the data set up into 100 equal parts. So for example, there's a median right here, which is the middle 50th percentile. Um, there's a quartile 3, which we're going to learn on the next page, and a quartile 1. Right? Those are the 25th percentiles, the 50th percentiles, and the 75th percentiles, respectively. Those are actually in a couple pages, but might as well learn them now. And then the percentiles, these are just three of the most special percentiles. But then you have to fit a whole bunch of different little markers in here, and each one of those is standing for a percentile. So um, actually, let me, let me label this down here. That's percentile one, that's percentile two, and so on and so on and so on. Over here, you'll have P51. Right next to it, you'll have P52. Over here, you'll have P76. Up here, you'll have P99 and P98. And I can't fit them all in, but you get the gist, <laughs> right? There's 99 markers that separate the data set into 100 equal pieces. That's what this is saying. So there's 99 values that separate the data into 100 equal parts. In each of these little sections that you see, each little section from here to here has a single percent of the data in every little bit, 1% there, 1% there. It's between the markers. So there's 1% right there and another 1% right next to it. And if you stack up 25 of those, that gets you to the 25th percentile. If you stack up 50 of them, you get to this one, the 50th percentile, and so on. So for example, P49 is right here. P24 is right here. P26 is right here. And each of those sections, and they don't have to be equal spaced, that's the thing. They have to have an equal number of data points in there. But each per section has 1% of the data. Oops, there we go. Okay. Now the three most special I just want to highlight, we'll talk about them in a couple pages, but these three, Q1, Q2, right, well, that's what this one is, Q2 is the median, and Q3, those are special percentiles, they're called the quartiles, and we'll deal with them later. All right, now what, okay, so how, how do we how do we write this? <laughs> and where have we seen this? You said I've seen this before. Yes, if ever you were taken to a doctor's office as a child, your parents saw this because they measure you against these um, percentile graphs. And they say, oh, your child's in the 17th percentile for height, right? That's what they're getting at. Also, if you get your SATs or ACT scores back, when they give you those back, they tell you what percentile you were in. Same thing with the statewide tests. Um, it used to be MEEP tests, but now there's another name for it in Michigan. But those tests, or whatever state you're watching in, every almost every state has some standardized test that the kids have to take in junior high and high school. And when you, your parents get those scores back, it tells you, you know, my child was in the 98th percentile, right? So 98% is at, oh, sorry, 1% is what I wanted to write there. 1% is at or below that value. But now let's think about the, the interpretation. If these were test scores, say for like the SAT or something like that, you'd like to be over here, right, in this top quarter. Because, for example, P76, 76% of the data is below that value. Only 24% is above it. You'd really like to be over here, right? The 98th and 99th percentile. So you're at the 98th percentile right here. This is P98 right there. If you're at the 98th percentile, 98% of the test takers are below you and only 2% are above you or with you, right? Ah, so, so you have seen these, right? So yes, if you've ever taken a test like that, then you've done this, right? So they, they've got the percentages below you and the percentage above you, and that's how we interpret it. So K percent of the observations 
and give it some context are less than or equal to your value. Another way they say that is that k percent of the data values are at or below your score. Right? So if you, well, we're going to see some examples right down here, but just think about this. If you're over here at 98, p 98, if you scored that value, 98 percent of the test scores, that would be your observations, that in context, are less than or equal to your score, right, or at or below your score. All right, so let's think about this for some examples. So um, child's height, your child is in the third percentile for weight, is their cause for concern? Oh yes, okay, so let's interpret this. Um, yes, right, there's cause for concern. <laughs> Cause for concern is warranted, or I guess I should say, yes, there is cause for concern. Yes, there is cause for concern because the child is underweight. Now, what do I mean by that? This is why the pediatricians have these charts in their offices. And some of you, if you've had kids, you know what I'm talking about because you've done this, right? So if we go to the interpretation piece, only 3% of the observations of 3% of children, it would be children of the same age, by the way. They always compare them to the same age as your child. 3% of children are at or below your child's weight. Let me just pretend. Let me, I'm just going to give this child a weight. Let me let me say it's of, you know, I don't know, 45 pounds. So you'd say only 3% of children are at or below 45 pounds. Something like that. All right. Um, let's see, suppose you scored a raw score of 63% on an exam. Ooh, that's, that does not sound good. But then it means you're in the 84th percentile. Was this exam an easy or difficult one and how did you score? Well, let's think about this for just a second. Let's use the interpretation script. So let's just use that script so we can see this. So interpretation script. Which is 83 Four, sorry, 84% of scores, right, on this test, that's, that's your context, were less than or equal to or at or below 63%. I just say at or below because it's easier to write it. It's, it means the same thing. It means less than or equal to. They're either at 63% or below 63%. That's what that means. So this was a tough exam, right? This is, right? So this was a difficult exam. Right? As most students are below passing. I'll just say because most students are below, well below, well below a passing grade of 70%. Um, that's the kind of thing that a professor curves, right? So grade of 70%. Right Now, I, I did the interpretation script for our own benefit. It didn't specifically ask for it, but you should write it in the notes because that's what you're going to have to do for a lot of the worksheets and stuff. But it's also important to be able to interpret how this what this means for this overall picture, which is that this was a tough exam. 84% of the students scored below 63%, right? At, so this means at 63% or below. That's another way you could write it. Either way. Sorry, that looks like an F. <laughs> it's at, at 63% or below. All right, now suppose you scored a raw exam, a score of 81%. So you're feeling good. You're like, hey, 63% bad, but then you realize you did better than 84% of the students. Matter of fact, let me make a note of that, right? So you did a bad, bad score, you think, but you're better than 84% of the students, right? So better, right, scored better than 84% 
of the class, right? So now you're not feeling so bad, right? You did better than 84% of the class. That's another way to interpret this, by the way. But now look down here. You're thinking, woohoo, I got an 81, all right. But you actually only did better than 59% of the class. See? So you scored. It's measuring your position. If you think about what percentiles are, it measures your position in relation to the group. So in a way, I would feel better in some respects about the 63 because I know I did so much better than everybody else than the 81, which ostensibly is a higher score, but I only did better than 59%, right? If you're trying to compare yourself to the rest of the group, you didn't do as good. All right, so let's, let's practice that script one more time. Script. Okay, so 59% of students, I'll just write this slightly differently, scored less than or equal to 81%. All right, so was this an easy exam or a difficult one? The answer is it obviously was easy. Right, tons of students are scoring higher than 81%, right? So this was an easy exam. Right? I mean, if you think about it, 41% of students are scoring higher than 81. Right? That's another way to interpret this, by the way, right? Because, you know, let's think 41% of the class scored higher, right, if 59% is at or below 81, then 41% is higher than 81. Right? If that makes sense. So it always pays to kind of think about it on a number line. So you have your, you know, your medians right here, right, it's got 50%. Then over here, you're at 59%. So P59, that's 81%. What that means is that over here is 59% at this value or less than that value. So here or less is 59% of the class of students. Whereas over on the other side, um, I need a color here, let me grab blue. Over on the other side, is 41% of students, right? That's the way to think about percentiles, right? Percentiles are giving you the percentage that is less than or equal to your value, but it also inherently gives you the percentage on the other side too, because they've got to make 100%, right? That's where I got the 41 from. 59 and 41 makes 100. Right, 100% of the class has to be in there. Oh, and I shouldn't put arrows on this for forever, sorry. It ends over here. It ends here at the min, the minimum score, and it ends over here at the max, the maximum score. So 59% of the students are below 81 or equal to, equal to or below 81. 41% of the students are more than 81. 